want to read to you this morning that Luke's account of the resurrection. This is from Luke 24. If you're following Luke 24, just the first 12 verses. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, that's the women, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. And then he went home, amazed at what happened. Isn't that an amazing slide? It's just one of my favourite. I really love it. And this is the way my brain works. Not everyone's brain works this way, but I, I think of these things. And I wonder what it would be like if um, CCTV cameras were around in Jesus' day and they were inside the tomb. You know, I wonder what would the tape show? Would they show just Jesus waking up, um, taking off his wrappings and just walking out and pushing the stone away? Or would just, all you see on the tape is this blinding flash of light and when it stops there's just no one there. Or maybe there's no light at all, he just disappears. We don't know and you know what, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Here's the question to ponder. And again, not everyone would think this way, but what was the purpose of the stone being rolled away? Well, some will say the purpose of the stone being rolled away and the empty tomb was evidence of the resurrection. Well, you know, um, not really. Because as we read in Matthew, the chief priests, remember, bribed the soldiers to say that the disciples had stolen his body during the night. And Jews to this day, as Matthew said at the time he wrote that, still believe that. So, you know, people who don't want to believe in the resurrection will always find a plausible, seemingly plausible explanation for the empty tomb. The stone being rolled away, friends, is no proof of the resurrection of Jesus. What is proof is people encountering the risen Jesus, people seeing the risen Jesus. Think about it. Jesus didn't need the stone to be rolled away to get out of the tomb. He's God. He could have got out any way he wanted to, couldn't he? Let's have a think about this. So then why was the stone rolled away? Was it to let Jesus out or to let the women in? Why did the women want to go in? Because they wanted to serve Jesus in the best way they knew how. And that was to prepare his body for the burial. So they turned up with spices to anoint his body. They had gone to the tomb to do what people did and finish the burial. But they didn't find him. All they found was the empty tomb. And then in bewilderment, two men in dazzling clothes appeared. And what did they say? Why? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus wasn't hanging around a tomb, was he? Tombs spell death. 
Jesus wasn't hanging around the tomb. He wasn't there. Where was he? He was already out, found among those who were grieving, among the disciples, to Peter and others, and to Thomas in the midst of his doubt, to those who were downcast on the road to Emmaus, to, and later on, he was there with the Philippian jailer, to Saul on the road to Damascus, and to many others throughout time. And still, the risen Jesus is people are encountering the risen Jesus through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to this day. And friends, the risen Jesus is often where we least expect him to be. In as much as you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me, said Jesus himself. He is there in the poor, the outcast, those in prison, anywhere. He is not limited to the status or the places that we may think the King of Kings may be worthy to go. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Dear friends, I want to suggest to you that that is an abiding question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Because today so, so, so many people are doing just that. They're searching for life, desperately looking for life and hope and meaning and purpose. But they're looking where there's death, not life. And we have a powerful message of hope. He's not there. He's not where you're looking. But he has risen. And he is for you all that you are longing for, all that you are hoping for, all that you are hungry for, all that you are thirsty for. He is all of that. That is not where you're looking. Many people are desperately looking in themselves. As a new age thinking says, the answer's within you, and people are looking in themselves to finding that. But all we find when we look in ourselves, separate to God, separate to a life that's been rejuvenated by God, all we find is broken humanity. All we find is a person victim to the fall. Without Jesus, we don't find within us life. We only find death. How many people are looking for meaning and purpose through recognition for worldly accolades, success in life as defined by the Western world? Money, riches, power, status, all of those things. But how often do we see again and again all of those things crumble? There is no guarantee of continual, meaningful, purposeful life in all of those. All they create is a hunger and a thirst for more because it's never enough. How many people are looking for life in the past? Harking back to the good old days, trying to reclaim the past. But we have a romantic notion of that. They weren't actually as good as we remember them. They just seemed that way. But it's finding, looking, trying to live in the past. Or trying to find meaning and purpose in life in religion. You won't find it there no matter what it is. And I'm not just talking about you won't find it in Muslim religion or Buddhism religion or Hindu religion. You won't find it in Christian religion either. If it's religion, you will not find it there. You'll just find some dead relics of old traditions. There's no life there. And in the midst of that, the voice of those angels would still resound today. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? So many people, friends, are stuck in the story of their past. As you know, another part of my ministry is a coaching ministry, life coaching and leadership coaching, and I, I love operating in that space. And, um, but not everybody, not everybody who comes to me, I can serve, not everybody is coachable. People who are stuck in the story of the past and can't get out of their story, you can't help. I have even, with a totally um, just secular hat on, but as you know, I believe in the Lord, when we're there to minister to the Lord, no matter what we say or don't say, can work through us. But if I did not even mention Jesus' name, I can say in that, I would love to help you create a new story. 
story of the present and the story of the future, but sadly, some people are stuck in the story of the past and choose not to leave it to create a new story. And you know, I can think of a soldier I coached, and, and this guy was not a Christian, he called, thought himself an atheist, but you know, God can work in spite of that, and we got great things. He, he suffered anxiety, depression, and some other mental illness and that. But to his credit, he decided, he made a choice to take responsibility and leave the story behind, not going over, it was the army's fault, the army did this to me, it's my fault, it's my... All of that may be true and, and justified, but staying there is not going to help. What we now know about the human brain is the more we focus on that, the more ingrained those neural pathways become if we focus on the hurts of the past. I'm sure you guys find that in healing rooms, don't you? Those who just focus and absorb, it just grows. But this guy, to his credit, decided to create a new story and focus on where he wanted to be, not where he didn't want to be. And he made amazing progress. Now, this is someone who didn't know the help of the Lord, the one who gives us the Holy Spirit, the one who Paul says we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How much more of a gift do we have to be able to be transformed? But we have a choice as the people of God. Are we going to be bound by the past? or inspired by the future that Jesus has opened up for us through the empty tomb. And what that means is making a choice. Yet yeah, God can provide the help. The Holy Spirit is a source of healing and power and strength and enabling to move on. And that's His story created in and through us. But we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make to stand and live in resurrection victory and not continue to look for life among dead relics of our old past life, our old past hurts, our old past stories, but to be a part of the new story. This was a powerful, decisive moment in history that began. This is the last... Uh, faction or sector in history. You know, there was a section of the patriarchs and the prophets and all of those, but this was God's defining moment in history, friends. The resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus was the defining moment of Christian between uh, in history, between now and the time when Jesus comes again. This is the final era. And he is in the process of making all things new until that time when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever. And you know what? He is inviting us to be part of that story. Amen. We are called, commissioned and empowered to join with him in the creative and powerful transformation of the, to the, of the world till this falls away to the new heavens and the new earth. He's called us to be part of that story, the new story, the story of now and the story of the future. But what that means is we have a choice to make, a choice to live in resurrection victory, not trying to resuscitate the old. You do know that there is a difference between resurrection and resuscitation. There is a big difference, yeah. Resuscitation is what Jesus did to Lazarus when he raised him from the dead. Also what he did, the power of God, but Lazarus would have lived and eventually died again. True? Okay? But Jesus wasn't resuscitated. He was resurrected, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, with a new body, an eternal body, which we'll all get one day. Doesn't that sound very cool? <laughs> Who's ready for that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm digressing here. Let's get back. Stay. Focus, Mark. Focus. So when Jesus raised from the dead, he wasn't just resuscitated. He didn't return to normal life, live another 40, 50 years, and then die again. No. No. But see, many people are trying to resuscitate their old life rather than live in resurrection, new life. As Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, the saying is trustworthy, for if we die with him, we shall also live with him. And if we endure, we shall also reign with him. That's the beautiful promise, isn't it? As we endure in our faith, not in our own strength, but the strength of the Lord who is with us, 
through the challenging times, we will reign with him. What a beautiful promise. If we die, we shall also live with him. But friends, we have to die first. We have to die to the old in order to live. And if we choose not to die to old thinking, to old hurts, to old traditions, we can't move into the new. If we keep going over the past, looking for a different outcome, we'll never find it. We'll never find it. We're just looking for the living among the dead. So we need to heed the angel's word to the women. Remember what they said to the angel said to them? They said, remember how he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and crucified and on the third day rose again? Oh yeah, he did. Suddenly they remember. Well, he did say those things, didn't he? Everything that happened, Jesus had taught them. But here they were wallowing in grief. In their grief. They'd forgotten. And when the angel said, remember what he taught you. But before we um, are too hard on the women, how often do we need to be remember what Jesus taught? Put my hand up for that. We can so easily, can't we, get bogged down and overwhelmed that we can forget his living and active word. We can forget the teachings of life and hope and health and peace that is contained in his word. So, like the women of old, we need to take heed of the word. Remember what he taught you in those times we're overwhelmed, in those times where we go to automatic pilot and start looking in places where we won't find him. Remember what he taught you. That is why. That is why being able to feast on, recall, remember the word, brought alive by the Holy Spirit is so, so critical to living in this resurrection life, lest we find ourselves looking among the dead. Very soon there's going to be this opportunity to reaffirm our baptism. It's a true, speaking of traditions, <laughs> hopefully this is a life-giving tradition. Something we've done for several years now on Easter Sunday is to have the opportunity to reaffirm our baptism. And that will be made for, for all of us here. Um, the opportunity to do that. Uh, don't have to, but if you'd like to, that opportunity is there. Because our baptism is a powerful sign, isn't it? That we're not looking for the living among the dead. What did Paul say in Romans 6? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. So our baptism, where there will be that opportunity to reaffirm today, is a powerful outward sign of the burying of our old life, our old way of thinking, our old traditions, our old hurts. They're buried. They're buried. If anyone is in Christ, says Paul in 2 Corinthians, they are a new creation. The old has passed. The new has come. Friends, it's not the pervasive power of the empty tomb. Awesome is that. It is a powerful encounter with the risen Jesus. That is the best and most effective symbol of the reality of the resurrection. Let's affirm that. Because the same Jesus who appeared to the women, to Peter, the same Jesus who appeared to Thomas through locked doors, who came to him in the midst of his doubt, the same Jesus who appeared to the downcast followers on the way to Emmaus, the road to Emmaus, is the same Jesus who is with us now through the Holy Spirit. We may not see him physically or touch him as those did before he ascended to heaven, but he is here. And it's our encounter with the risen Jesus in the everyday that sustains our faith. And out of the overflow of that, enables us to bear witness to that to others. Amen. 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 He is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Can we stand and affirm that? Our God is an...